Hi, this is Shadia, and today I want to talk about the fundamentals. What you just saw is absolutely horrendous. So we often talk about the basics. Anytime we mature grappling wise, we say, you know, I appreciate the basics more now. I appreciate the fundamentals. They truly make a champion. We praise people like Hickson or the Japanese when they're doing their judo because of sticking to the fundamentals. But today, for longevity in grappling, for longevity in general, in life, or in whatever that you do, the fundamentals will always be very important. Like you see here, creating this angle, whether it's an armbar or a triangle, the pressure and the effort will become much less and you'll be also very efficient. Also, judokas, before you learn how to throw, you are taught usually how to fall down and here this uh, footage courtesy of the Kodokan demonstrates these uh, various types of ukemi which is very crucial and I'll share a story with you uh, in just a little bit but um, regarding that awful accident that happened with the triangle choke to that person that's been doing it he must have felt uh, an unreal uh, amount of pain and pressure on his femur which is if i'm not mistaken the thickest or one of the thickest bones in your body and then it's just completely snapped so the amount of pressure that he was putting and not even getting the tap it shows that the lack of basics is very much present and also People often say this when it comes to triangle choke. Oh, you have very long legs. You know, be a triangle guy. Personally, I disagree. Um, if you have long legs, skinny legs, you want to be a, a spider guy, the Lahiva guy. Okay, yes. But when it comes to triangle, at least for me, from what I learned, because I'm all torso, it's best to have shorter legs and strong adductors because the noose on their neck and their shoulder is going to be much tighter and you're going to get the tap much more efficiently at least that's my uh, opinion on the matter uh, but in terms of being efficient this is something i've learned by doing triangle chokes for i'd say four years now and i recently got my black belt and i'm very happy but it's always been the same i still remember uh, i was in brazilian jiu-jitsu class or jiu-jitsu class and he told me, and I told my professor, I was like, I'm not flexible. I have short legs. Can I do a triangle? And he said, you absolutely can. He's a European champion and a national champion. And he says that all you need is the right angle and the slightest squeeze from your adductor will finish the job. And indeed, he was correct. Um, in judo, same thing. I'm still working on it. They still show me a few things from various positions, but in terms of doing it from the guard, you know, which is the most famous uh, variation of the triangle choke, it is all about creating that right angle and, you know, your flexibility, the length of your legs really doesn't matter. Uh, I, and like I said, stronger, shorter legs are much more efficient. At least that's my opinion. Um, but in terms of the basics, they will seriously save you in terms of protecting your hips protecting your legs protecting your head anything like for example uh, the one great example is ev that everyone knows is you know don't cross your legs when you're in back mount because you're gonna get uh, locked your ankles are gonna get locked and you're gonna get tapped it's the same because there's always these fundamentals that's gonna protect you and at the same time they can protect your uh, partner because if I create the right angle, whether it's an armbar, whether it's a um, triangle, and I need far less strength, all I need is correct positioning, I can control the intensity of the submission and therefore I can control and really pin them and I can tap them progressively, which will also create safety for your partner. This is all about staying safe, going back home safe. You win, you lose, all of that, it doesn't matter. You're just here to learn and then go back the next day. Winning and losing really does not matter, as Vlad said it in the podcast. So, 
another thing when it comes to stand-up grappling is falling and throwing someone you really need to be careful and you really need to be caring when you do it let me tell you a story of this past weekend this past weekend i had what is called like a kata seminar so for your black belt in japan for those of you who are asking for the first degree you need um at least uh I believe a particular age, like a teenage age, like maybe 14 or 16 years old, I'm not entirely sure, and above, you need to be practicing judo at least a year and a half, and then collect uh, three points or three wins consecutively, as you saw from my competition. You need to win three fights, or if you don't win, for example, you get one win, you have to wait for the next competition and then collect two points or three or one point depending on how many points you still need but a total is three points and i was very lucky and i was very happy to get it all in one go uh, three opponents consecutively no rest in between and you need to have nage no kata the first three series meaning the hand techniques the hip techniques and finally the leg techniques so this weekend i had what is called the nage no kata seminar so what you do is you come on saturday you train from noon to late afternoon, uh, nage no kata, and the way that they uh, teach it is absolutely amazing. I've done nage no kata many times in France, but I always felt it was very daunting, it was very boring, and it was very difficult. But the way they showed it to me uh, at the Kodokan was, it was very amazing and it was very simple, but that's not the whole story. The next day, you have to come in front of a jury, you do, you, you do like a practice once, all of us together, and then you present it in front of the jury, and then you get your kata certificate, and therefore you become a black belt. So, on Sunday, I performed the nage no kata in front of the jury and got my black belt. But here's the story that happened the day before, because it is absolutely crazy what happened. Kata, historically, people mock it. People say it's a dance. People say, you know, um, practicing kata is really useless. Just go out and fight. And I get these, um, I really get these arguments, but they're very, they're very narrow sighted in my opinion. And I learned a lot of principles for, for throwing principles when doing nage no kata, especially this weekend. So, uh, what happened was the following. We were separated onto two mats. You have the Nidan group because the Nidan, they need to do the entire kata and the Shodan, you need to do the first three series. Historically speaking, Nage no kata has a very high rate of injury, either from being a bad uke falling down incorrectly or being a very bad tori and being uh, very reckless with uke. Here's what happened. You had one guy in the Nidan group busted his knee. He didn't fall correctly. You had one guy um, in the Shodan group. He fell on his head in Kataguruma because Tori was being very reckless with him. He was escorted out of the mat. Uh, I have a problem falling left side always um, for some reason. I need. To, I really need to work on it. And I hurt my knee bad. Um, this is the second time that happened. Uh, in my judo career so it wasn't really something uh serious but it was very painful nonetheless i'm glad i got to perform the next day in front of the jury and finally and this is the most interesting one it was me doing ippon seonage in nage no kata and my and the as you saw from the falling drills you need to open your legs like a scissors and he did not do that and he ended up just busting his groin so you had like four injuries by people doing kata and to say that okay you guys are incompetent you don't deserve your back belt that's not true historically speaking it's a very dangerous kata one big story is yokoyama the demon uh, and um, his uke hajime isogai two absolute legends of judo and the kata finished Isogai not only was bleeding from his knees and shins, but he was also bleeding from the mouth. So, uh, because uh, Yokoyama expects you to be the best uke and he's gonna do the kata just like a, like a knife going through butter. So, the point is, of this video is this. 
your your basics are not boring your basics are not there to you know to separate you from the advanced guys and uh, you know because you're in your 20s no you can hang with the with the with the advanced guys or because you're muscular no it's to protect you it's to make sure your grappling career uh, lasts basically till the end of your life you want to be there on the mats till the end of your life and also competitively speaking you want to be able to finish that triangle choke in a second you want to be able to throw and land someone flat on their back in a second in competition do it as efficiently as possible and as safe as possible that's why i was very um uh, skeptic or very uh, unhappy with how um, abe did that one arm so that's really komigoshi extremely reckless no control nothing both of them could have gotten injured and most probably that technique is on its way out in the next rule change of the ijf so the point is this go back to the basics you have no idea how much they protect you and they have you have no idea how much they sharpen your grappling in terms of winning and also in terms of protecting your training partner and your friends so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only and it's not uh, something that you have to feel obliged to do obviously my main content will always be on the channel but your support would mean greatly it's just like full podcasts a little bit of exclusive content but your support would mean greatly this was shady and thank you for listening